as promised, we have compound inequalities. So a compound inequality is a sentence containing two simple inequalities connected with and or or. So just like in English, compound sentences ha are um, connected by what the fanboys for and nor but or yet so, right? So those create the compound sentences. In math, we only have just the two and or or. So a compound inequality is the same thing in English. It's two simple inequalities um, connected with and or or. What's that called? A, con a conjunction? No. A conjunction? Oh boy, I need to get on the up and up on my English, don't I? Oh, please forgive me. Please feel free to email me and tell me if I'm right or wrong. I may Google it after this though. But anywho, so we've got two kinds. And, which is an intersection, then we've got or, which is a union. So before we get into the nitty gritty of the math, I just want to talk about it in English, okay? Because for me, like I've, I've said over and over again, the old math guys back in the day, tired from inventing the math, who can blame them? That they label things pretty much how they, again, what they do, what they say, or what they tell, right? Basically, they called it like they saw it. So here, and is an intersection. So if you think of like a street intersection, okay, if you think of a street intersection, like, I don't know, let's say it's, um, um, got a first street and main street right so then here this intersection is where first and main connect right where they intersect so an intersection right if you think of like a stop sign stop light whatever that's called an intersection it's literally where two straights connect so first and main intersect here so same thing in the math it's where you're going to have overlap, okay? So intersection, I kind of want you to think of overlap. Just like here as a street intersection, first street and main street overlap at that area. So for intersection or and questions, you're gonna have numbers that overlap. The numbers that overlap are the numbers we want to take. Now here with union or I think of this one not as concrete example, but the best thing I can do is when you think of like two people getting married, right? It's called, like people call it a union sometimes, right? So if person A and person B are moving in together, then they have person A stuff. Oh, I should say person one, person A, person one. Please forgive me, person B. Person A, person one has their own stuff, right? Each person before they even started, um, before they knew each other had their own stuff. So now you're bringing all of your stuff together. So it doesn't matter whose is whose because once you're married or in a partnership, um, what's yours is mine, what's mine is yours type of deal, right? So it's or. Doesn't matter whose or is who or who brought what to the table. It's now both of yours, right? So a union or means that it's, I mean, if the number is present, then you're going to take it because it doesn't matter where it came from. It only matters that it's like up for grab, so to speak, right? Um, I hope that makes sense. If not, send me an email and I will be happy to come up with a better example for you. Okay. So union, I don't want to write free for all, but I mean, it's just, if the number's there, it's there. So let's do the concrete math examples. So if I've got the simple inequality of X is greater than negative six and X is less than four, then we want a bounded interval. The bounded part is kind of more self-explanatory visually. So here, what I like to do is numerically, because this is a number line, 
is I like on the same number line to have my two numbers that I'm comparing. I've got negative 6 on the left because it's less than negative 4. Sorry, I had to take a drink of water. So I'm going to look at this one independently. X is greater than negative 6. All right, no problem. So I'm just going to shade to the right because that's what we learned in the last lesson. Now, x is less than 4. Okay, cool, no problem. So now I'm going to shade to the left because that's what we were told to do in the last problem. But now, remember, this is and. This is an and problem. So I want where they overlap, right? So that means that this section or this chunk right here or the interval, right? is bounded because you have a cutoff at negative 6 and another cutoff at 4. But since it's strictly greater than, strictly less than, parenthesis, parenthesis, and there you go. That's it. So this is the solution. Oh boy, sorry, another yawn. I've got negative 6 to 4, but again, remember, this is x1, to x2, not x to y. Remember, we're still only in one variable. y is not a thing yet until the next section, okay? Remember, y doesn't come into play until chapter two. Remember, not a point x1 to x2, from negative six to four. Remember, we're rep we are representing the um, overlap. Okay, so now union. Same kind of deal. So if I want t is greater than 7 or t is less than 2, we're going to start off the same way. Here's 2, here's 7, 2 is on the left, 7 is on the right, because we want them in numeric order. So open circles on both because strictly less than, greater than on both of them. So independently, we have that t is greater than 7. So from 7 to the right we shade. And then independent, t is less than 2, so to the left of 2 we are going to shade. Now, remember, this is an or, so it doesn't matter what the shade, where the shaded area is, we're just going to take it all. So the whole answer is negative infinity to negative 2, or excuse me, to positive 2, parenthesis, union, positive 7 to infinity. And that's it. Now here, for union, we actually do have the little U, right? Yes, it does stand for union, right? So basically saying this chunk and, or this chunk plus this chunk. The union of these two chunks is my solution because remember, we're taking all the shaded area possible. Okay, so now it's really important that you remember if it's an and or an or question. Because if I change this to an or, then the answer is all real numbers because everything was shaded. If I change this to an and, then the answer is nothing because nothing is overlapping. Do y'all see that? So let's work on some examples. So we're going to work on this one first, and then this one. I would like for you to pause the video and try them both on your own, and then press play after you've given it a go. Okay, so first up, I'm going to multiply the negative 2 over, but since we're multiplying by negative 2, what can we not forget to do? Flip the sign. Because remember, for inequalities, anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number, you flip the sign. All right now, add the 5. What's that 1? Divide by 2. All right, so our first simple inequality is x is greater than 1 half. Over here, we got to solve for x, so we're going to multiply by 3. 
But what's anything times zero? Zero. So now we're gonna subtract the one, then divide by two. So x is less than one half. So now, I always like to do the visual, personally. I like graphing to help me decide what my actual interval is going to be, but you do you. All right, so now, x is greater than 1 half, so I'm just going to come to 1 half. Open circle, shade to the right. Now evaluating x is less than negative 1 half independently. I'm going to come to negative 1 half, open circle, shade to the left. And now, here's the most important part. We have to interpret the results. Remember, this was an and question. That means intersection. Is there any intersection? Is there any overlap? No. So what's the answer? No solution. And remember, how you write that is either with the empty set or the zero with the line through it, which stands for empty set. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too bad. Again, if you have any questions. Oh man, gosh, sorry, y'all gonna have to forgive me. Been doing these videos nonstop because I only had the few weeks between the spring semester and the summer semester to get these started. So my voice is, feels a little sore. Forgive me for all my water breaks. All right, back at this one. Pause the video, try it on your own. Okay, here, I'm gonna start off by multiplying both sides by two because as we know, not a fan of fractions. I just, I, messy, I don't know, I don't like them. Multiplying this side to two. So I've got x plus six, Oops, excuse me, I don't need that, is greater than 6. Now subtract 6, I've got that x is greater than 0. Cool. Same thing over here, except now I am going to distribute the 4, because again, if I divide, I get 3 fourths and fraction. So we get 4x minus 4 is less than 3x minus 4. Notice that if I add the four to either side, they zero out. So I just have that four X is less than three X. So subtracting the three X over, I'm gonna write this out specifically because sometimes it gives people kind of like a mental brain fart. So remember I'm subtracting the three over, so that means I've got zero here. Four X minus three X is just X. So over here on the right, I've got that X is less than zero. So number line, zero, x is strictly greater than, so let's open circle and shade to the right. Over here on the right, we've got that x is strictly less than zero, so again, open circle and shade to the left. Recall that this is the or, so are we worried about overlap here? No, not so much. We're just worried about shaded region air only. So every number shaded but what number? Zero. So I've got all the numbers to the left, negative infinity to zero, parenthesis, not inclusive. Union, zero to infinity, again, parenthesis all the time. Oh, let me touch real quick. Remember, for infinities, all parenthesis all the time. I'll print this all at the time. Because remember, parenthesis means exclusive, bracket means inclusive. Infinity means that the numbers don't stop. So you could get to the biggest number you know, and I could say, okay, plus one, and we could do that whole back and forth over and over again, right? So can we ever include something that doesn't stop? No, right? So again, the parenthesis, but also, some people like to say that, oh, it's because infinity is an idea and you can't include an idea, right? It's like in the cloud, so to speak. But anyways, just, you know, side note. 
And then here's a fun way where the set builder notation actually comes into comes in handy. You can say that's all values of x such that x doesn't equal zero. So this is the nice way um, to use set builder notation because it really does just kind of shorten things up and gives a nice visual of like, okay, all the numbers except zero. But that's it for compound. Up next is absolute value inequalities.